Congratulations, you've just had or you're about to have a trans breast augmentation by me, Dr. Barrett. I'm very excited for you and your journey, so you wanna make sure you pay attention to all of these post-operative instructions. Some important things to know after your breast augmentation are that you're going to have swelling. Don't worry about it. I tell people you look like you're gonna have aliens on your chest for the first six to nine weeks, especially with my trans breast augmentations. They take a lot longer to drop and fluff than my cis breast augmentations, okay? So expect them to be high and tight for at least nine weeks. You'll also notice that you may have some bruising, okay? A little bit of bruising is okay, and you'll also have some transient swelling that starts out up high and then gradually goes down to the hips. You're like, why is my abdomen swollen? Well, it's that swelling that drops down. I don't always place my patients into a surgical bra. If you don't have one, it's for a reason. If you do have one, it's for a reason. Uh, sometimes on my trans breast augmentations, I do put a bra to hold in an inframammary fold if needed. So if you wake up, you have one, keep it. If you don't have it, it's not a big deal. Uh, you can wear any kind of bra starting at two weeks. That could be a sports bra or underwire bra. And if you really feel like it, right after surgery, you can put a t-shirt on uh, or a loose fitting sports bra. We don't want tension because remember, we just put an implant in, it's already tight on the inside. If you make it tight on the outside, you're gonna cut off that blood supply. It's normal to have some numbness right after an operation. Typically that comes back within the first few days and sometimes it may take up to six months for that sensation to return. It's actually helpful to take a supplement called alpha lipoic acid and use vibration therapy with a vibrator once or twice a day on the nipples to help stimulate that nerve regrowth. It's normal to have strange sensations the first five weeks after your breast augmentation procedure. You might feel a little burning sensation, little zingers, uh, little, you know, certain little points of pain here and there. As long as they are getting better, you're good to go. If they're starting to get worse and more painful and the, and the pain is constant and duration, then you need to give us a call. You have a lot of medications that we prescribe to you, okay? The first thing I want you to do when you get home is to take off that little patch behind your ear. It's called a scopolamine patch and throw that away and wash your hands, okay? That is to help prevent nausea and once we're done with the operation, you're home safe and sound. You don't need that anymore because sometimes it will cause blurry vision. Um, so by removing that, that will get rid of that and also gets rid of that kind of sleepy feeling that you might be having. I did prescribe you narcotic pain medication. I recommend you don't take those unless you absolutely need to. 50% of my patients don't need to take them. The reason why is because they cause nausea. You take it right away, you throw up. Second reason is it causes constipation and can delay your wound healing. Third, there's a medication called Colace. It's a stool softener. Make sure you take one pill twice a day until you have a bowel movement. After you're done with that, you don't need to take it. If you're nauseous, there's a pill called Zofran. You can take that and put it underneath your tongue and it'll dissolve and you'll feel better right away. Antibiotics are important for the first seven days after your operation to prevent infection. Make sure you take them as instructed. If it's clindamycin, it's one pill three times a day. If it's Keflex, it's one pill four times a day for seven days. And please make sure to finish all those antibiotics in the bottle until it's completely empty. Exercise can start at two weeks. That's basically lower exercise, uh, lower body exercise. Examples of this are walking on an inclined treadmill, Stairmaster, uh, stair workouts, some isolated leg exercises is perfect for that time period. Believe it or not, at week four, you can start to do some light jogging and that with a supportive bra, at week six, you can get back to upper body, but you have to use your body as a guide. If something hurts, you wanna take a step back and make sure that you adjust so that it is, um, you're not hurting your body in a particular way. So pay attention to your body and you'll be fine. Please avoid sexual activity for at least two weeks. You have a series of stitches in your breasts. Uh, typically we remove the first layer at week one and we remove the second layer at week two. There's a blue for two. That's the blue proline one. That's gonna come out at week two. These stitch removals, they're not painful, so don't worry. At week four, you're gonna switch from the stair strips to start doing the scar gel twice a day. And at week six, you're gonna to start to do massage, which I can teach you uh, in the office, or there's a video on my YouTube, Implant Massage, where it shows you exactly how you should be massaging your implants. You wanna do massage for a total of six months. You wanna do the scar gel for a total of six months or longer if your scar is continuing to heal. And you also wanna take fish oil, which is a supplement I'll recommend, starting from week one after your operation all the way until six months. 
There's some urgent things I want you to watch out for. They typically don't happen, but if they do, when should you give us a call, okay? If you get a fever that's over 101 degrees, I want you to give us a call or call your doctor or go to the nearest emergency room. A fever is not normal and it could mean that there, there might be an infection, okay? Sometimes it's from not taking deep breaths, it could be from blood clots in your legs, or it could be an actual wound infection. Wound infections don't start until typically five to seven days later. If you get unilateral or bilateral extreme swelling and pain, that can be a sign of a hematoma, especially after you may have overexerted yourself in a particular situation. All right, so if you do feel that one side is dramatically bigger all of a sudden, or it was fine and then all of a sudden it's much bigger than the other side, that could be a sign of a hematoma. And if that's the case, we, mean to, we may need to do surgery to remove that blood, stop the bleeding and put the implant back in. It is not an emergent emergency, but it is something we wanna to try to take care of in the next 24 to 72 hours. If you have persistent nausea and vomiting and you can't keep any food or liquids down, you need to give us a call or go to your nearest emergency room. On your incision, you have steri strips around and uh, covering your incision and the stitches. That's very important to keep that there. It might actually bleed the first 24 hours and that is completely normal. Don't freak out, don't panic. Occasionally with steri strips, um, you may need to trim them or replace them as needed. Okay, you're gonna wear the steri strips for four weeks. Um, if they start to cause an itchy rash around them, you wanna make sure you remove that steri strips, wash with soap and water, and you can apply some Benadryl cream to the area. Do not apply any cortisone to the area because it can cause weakening of your incision and problem with healing. You also may take a shower within 24 hours of your operation. You want the water to kind of run over gently, but you don't want to get into any standing water, bathtub, hot tub, jacuzzi. That way water can sink into your incision and cause an infection. There's a lot of restrictions that I want you to be aware of. Um, afterwards, the general protocol is first two weeks walking three times a day, that's gonna help prevent blood clots in your body and allow for some movement that will actually let you heal. You don't wanna be in bed all day, okay? The bed puts you closer to, closer to the grave. I always tell my patients that. You wanna be up, moving around, but minimal exertion of activities, all right? We don't wanna raise our arms above the shoulder level. You can wash your hair like this, but don't reach above like this. Think T-Rex arms for the majority of what you're doing. Don't lift more than eight pounds for the first six weeks. That's basically a gallon of milk. You don't wanna lift anything more than that. And if you do have to do some lifting, use your legs and not your pectoralis muscle. Anything that engages your pectoralis muscle is what we are afraid of. For sleep at night, I recommend that you sleep with three pillows up at a 30 degree angle. The reason why is it allows the decrease in swelling of the breasts. Now, if you can't sleep like that and it interferes with your sleep, the most important thing is your sleep, okay? So get back down to a level that you can tolerate. But if you can tolerate it for the first three nights, that's great. Then slowly get back down to flat. You can start going onto your side at seven days and then you can actually start to go on your stomach at 14 days, all right? Uh, especially if you have taping that will protect your incision after your second layer of sutures is removed, okay? Remember your sleep is one of the most important things for your healing. You wanna make sure you optimize it. So if none of this stuff works, do whatever it takes for you to get the appropriate amount of sleep. Remember, breasts are sisters, not twins. There always will be subtle differences in one breast versus the other. They will drop at differential rates. Sometimes on the side of your hand dominance will actually take longer for that side to drop down. So if you're right hand dominant, that side might stay higher than the other side. That's because of activation of the pectoralis muscle more than the other side. You wanna make sure that you use both arms and use ambidextrous actions to help prevent asymmetrical swelling and asymmetrical rates of dropping. But even if it does happen, they eventually all catch up. The important thing to realize is to have patience. It could take up to six months for you to see your full results. What kind of supplies do you need after you're healing from your surgery? Well, we put everything in this little kit for you. It's got gloves, it's got gauze, it's got high-end stuff in here, ice packs, saline, all this stuff individually would cost you probably like three to $500. It is the ultimate first aid kit. So even if you don't use it for your procedure, keep it in your house, you're gonna love this. I spared no expense putting this together for you guys, but it's exactly everything you're gonna need to recover from your procedure in terms of supplies, dressings, you name it. Here's our kit. The recommendation I have after breast augmentation for your scar management starting at four weeks when you're done with taping is Scanuva. This is a product I love 
because it has silicone in it and also has some fetal growth factors and lightening agents that help decrease the visibility of the scar. All right, I've tried a lot of different products for my patients, including Biocornium and a bunch of others. Um, some work great, some don't work at all. This is the best that I found. Instructions for use, you wanna use it firmly on your incision twice a day and do that for a total at least of six months. I recommend Arnica to help with swelling. It also reduces bruising. This is a product that we have. It's called Arnica Repo Recovery Complex. It has a combination of Arnica and bromelain and a few other things that help with generalized inflammation. The most powerful medication I have for breast augmentation pain relief is magnesium. This is a product I recommend. It's called Magnesium Breakthrough. It is way different than that crappy magnesium you get at the drugstore that only has one or two different types of magnesium that barely gets absorbed by your body, which is why it causes diarrhea. All right. This has seven different types of magnesium, which I recommend because it gets truly absorbed by your body. It helps you sleep at nighttime. It helps with constipation and it helps relax your muscles, especially after breast augmentation or tummy tuck if you had that, so that your pain um, is not triggered by muscle movement, all right? So magnesium breakthrough, take two of these at nighttime. You can actually take two morning and night if you've just had surgery. The overall general supplement that I recommend for healing after surgery is called Heal Fast. This is a post-op injury formula and it's got everything that you need to basically recover. Um, it's great for your hair, your skin, everything else. I have a lot of people that continue to take this even after their surgery is done. You basically wanna take five of these capsules every single day. I know it's a lot, but your body needs a lot to heal during that post-operative phase. Living Fuel Super Essentials is my go-to to help prevent capsule contracture after breast augmentation surgery, all right? The evidence shows that if you take fish oil on a regular basis, it will decrease your risk of capsule contracture by 10%. That's a huge deal. If you're 10% less likely to get capsule contracture, it is totally worth it. Not only that, but fish oil is great for longevity. The reason why I recommend this product is because it is from high quality fish, all right? So it doesn't have a lot of the toxins from some of the bigger fish. It's from deep sea fish, which has a lot less mercury and other heavy metals that are polluting the environment. Okay, so the Living Fuel Super Essentials Omegas helps relax, get rid of inflammation, and then also prevents that capsule contracture. Hopefully you've already done this. The Heal Fast Preoperative Formulation is something I want you to take prior to your surgery. You wanna take four of these capsules every single day. That way your body is optimized for surgery, and then you take the postoperative supplementation afterwards. So my go-to for pain relief after breast augmentation or any surgery in general is the Barrett Recovery CBD, all right? This is an all organic CBD, high concentration, 1500 milligrams with some added terpenes that help with post-surgical inflammation that help you heal and lower your body's inflammation. This is a great product to help you sleep. Do not take pain medication to help you sleep at night. You can take up to four full droppers of this every single day. And the way you wanna take it is take the dropper, put it underneath your tongue, let it sit for a minute or so until it's completely absorbed. You're gonna get the best absorption that way. You can also continue to take this even after you're done with surgery. I have a lot of patients that continue to do so. I take this every single night to help improve my deep sleep. Check it out, Barrett Recovery CBD.